Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a velvet sweater from scratch. I got inspired by the hater Ackerman sweater that I saw Kanye wearing, so I decided to make my own. But without further ado, let's make a velvet sweater. For this tutorial, you're going to need ballpoint needles, a bunch of pins, a pair of cutting tools, a measuring tape, two yards of velvet fabric, and one yard of ribbed knit material. You're also going to need a body and sleeve template. If you don't have either one, you can go over to this tutorial and make them. I'll put a list of everything you'll need in the video description. To start off, we are going to cut and sew together the body piece. Grab your velvet fabric and double up on it by folding it over. Place the body template over the fabric and proceed to pin it onto the fabric. Once the template is pinned onto the fabric, cut around the template. You should end up with two identical body pieces like this. To differentiate between the front and back body piece, we need to bring the neckline of the front piece down two inches. Grab one of the body pieces and go to the neckline. Take your measuring tape and measure two inches from the neckline. Place a pin at that measurement. Proceed to cut a semicircle to this mark. Here's a neckline comparison between the front and back body piece. Now that we have the body pieces cut, we can sew them together. Have the front body piece faced up and place the back body piece face down over it. Proceed to pin along these areas of the body piece. When you start pinning the sides, you want to add a reference pin 2 inches from the bottom. These reference pins will remind us to stop at a certain point. Take the body piece to the sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pinned areas. Remember to start and end with a back stitch. Also remember to stop at the reference pins. Next we're going to cut and sew the sleeves. Grab some more velvet fabric and double up on it by folding it over. Place your sleeve template over the fabric and pin it into place. Along the narrow ends of the sleeve, you want to measure 2 inches from the template and add a pin line. Once the template is pinned, you can proceed to cut around the template and pin line. When you're done with all the cutting, you should end up with two identical sleeve pieces. Now that the sleeve pieces are cut, the next step is to cut and rebond the sleeve pieces. This will give the sleeves a layering look. Split your sleeve into three separate pieces. It doesn't matter where you decide to split the pieces. Once the sleeve is split, we can now rebond the pieces. Flip each piece onto the wrong side of the fabric. Starting with the curved part of the sleeve, you want to fold the raw edge by an inch. After you fold the raw edge, you want to bring the corresponding piece over the fold and pin the two pieces together. You want to repeat this one more time for the last piece. When you're done with all the pinning and hemming, it should look like this. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the folds. You can get creative with this part, you can do some decorative stitches or do multiple top stitches. It's really up to you. But here's how my sleeves turned out. Once the sleeves are rebonded, it's time to close them up. Grab one of the sleeves, have the right side facing up. Fold it over so the sides match up and proceed to pin the sides together. Here's how the pinning should look on both sleeves. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch to close up the sleeves. Next we're going to sew the sleeves onto the body piece. Turn the body piece inside out and have the sleeves right side up. Bring the narrow end of the sleeve into the armhole of the body piece. You want to match the sleeve seam with the armhole seam. Then proceed to pin the two pieces together. Once the two pieces are pinned on, the pinning should look like this. Now take the sweater to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pinned area. After you finish sewing on the sleeves, the next part is to hem the raw edges with ribbed knit. Starting with the bottom of the body piece, you want to grab your measuring tape and measure from side to side. This measurement will be the length of your ribbed knit. Now you want to grab your ribbed knit fabric. For the length, measure out your length. For the width, you want to measure out 12 inches. 
proceed to cut out a rectangle with these measurements. Grab one end of the fabric and fold it over two inches. Then you want to fold it over one more time. After the second time, you want to cut off the excess fabric. Add pins along the fold to keep everything in place. With the remaining fabric, you want to create a second band. Again, grab one end of the fabric, fold it over two inches, fold it over again, and pin the fold in place. When you're done with all the folding and pinning, you should end up with two identical bands like this. Take the two bands to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. Now that both bands are sewn, we can sew it onto the sweater. Take the raw end of the band, place it over the raw end of the body piece and pin the two pieces together. Make sure to not pin both layers of the sweater. Once you finish one side, you want to repeat this one more time for the other side. When you're done with all the pinning, this is how it should look on both sides of the sweater. Take the sweater to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pinned area. Now that the bands are sewn onto the sweater, we can close up the sides. Turn the sweater inside out. Place together the sides and use pins to keep them in place. Here's how the pinning should look when you're all done. Take the sweater to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pinned area. Next we're going to add cuffs to the sleeves to hem it. Grab your measuring tape and wrap it around your wrist and record the measurement. To avoid any measurement errors, you want to add 2 inches to your total measurement. This will be your length. For the width, the default measurement is 6 inches. Cut out two rectangles with the length and width measurements. You should end up with two pieces like this. Take one of the rectangles and vertically fold it in half. Then vertically fold it in half again. After the two vertical folds, you want to horizontally fold the fabric and pin along the open end. Repeat this one more time for the other cuff. When you're done with both cuffs, the pinning should look like this. Take both cuffs to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the open end of the cuff. After both cuffs are sewn, we can now attach them onto the sleeves. With your cuffs inside out, bring one of them onto your sewing bed. Make sure to bring the raw end of the cuff first. Then bring your sleeve onto the sewing bed. Position the cuff over the sleeve and proceed to do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the two pieces. Repeat this one more time for the other sleeve. The last place that we need to hem with ribbed knits is the neckline. Take your measuring tape and measure around the neckline. To prevent any measurement errors, you want to add 2 inches to your total neck length. The width for the neckline is always going to be 4 inches. Grab your ribbed knit material and cut out a long band using the measurements that we just got. You should end up with a rectangle like this. Now take the rectangle and fold it in half. After the first fold, you want to fold it one more time. Proceed to pin along the open side. This is how the pinning should look across the band. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the open end of the band. After you finish sewing the band shut, we can now sew it onto the neckline. Starting either at the left or right shoulder seam, you want to take one end of the band and place it over the seam. You want it to overlap the seam by an inch. Also make sure that the raw end of the collar piece is lined up with the neckline. Proceed to pin the collar piece around the neckline. As you approach the end, you want to overlap the shoulder seam once again. Now take the sweater to your sewing machine and start one inch away from the shoulder seam. Start with a back stitch and zigzag or overlock stitch your way around the collar piece. Like at the beginning, you want to stop one inch away from the shoulder seam and do a back stitch. You should end up with two loose ends like this. You want to face them against each other at the shoulder seam and pin them together. We are going to sew along this pin. Take your sweater to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pin. After the two ends are sewn together, you can cut off any excess material. Place the sweater back into the sewing machine and sew the remaining part of the collar piece. 
When you're done with all the sewing, you can try on your new velvet sweater. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. But anyways, that's the tutorial. This is Ken and you daily and remember to keep it daily. Peace.